All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Strong Fit Podcast. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Mighty Networks, some more about Mighty Networks. More than anything, um, the one-on-one mentoring we've been doing and yeah. seeing in progress with coaches. And I think it's individuals as well working on themselves to become better at just themselves, right? So right. I want to say, are you finding your comfortable spot? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, we're one of the few people out there that are making people do work be active and not have a simple solution, a fucking hack, a end. A memorization. A, yeah. yeah, right. I mean, the list can probably keep going on if we sit here and kind of think about it. Um, and so that's kind of what we're talking about is how is it that we keep evolving as a human? How do we keep progressing in our field with people that we work with? How do we allow them to continue to progress, right? And so I think one of the biggest things that I've learned, especially in my young career as a chef, um, it was sh- uh, Chef John Cuevas. He was the chef at the Montage when I was working there, working my way up the line. And he said, as soon as you're not learning from me, quit your job and go find somebody else you can learn from, right? And so I think that's a really big concept and something that I keep talking to coaches about is they're stuck in a gym environment Right. Where it becomes easy and comfortable. And you see this with athletes as well, right? Where you're, where you seem to be comfortable and stagnant in this way where there's no more learning. And as soon as you reach outside to learn, it becomes dangerous to the gym yeah. owner yeah. or the head coach. And then you start becoming ridiculed or you start getting kind of pushed aside. And you either have to shut up and continue in that Suck comfortable it. life because Suck they're paying, yep. the, paying exactly. the bills. Um, or you have to do something about it. And so I think that's a big thing that we have is we have what I what we're, what we just literally came up with it today the strong fit multiverse <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> where we're continuously learning but the coolest thing is that we have our one on one mentoring the coaches course where they have these calls with us and we put I think a lot of these coaches that are coming in into uncomfortable situations because we're forcing right. them to grow but that's that's how this works I mean I'll take my own example on this because I make mistakes just like everybody else. I realized something like, so I was doing a kickboxing this morning and all Paul wants me to do is move faster. Yeah. Right? It's just fast, fast, faster. F- it's always fastest continuously. So even when I get tired and I slow down, I still have to kick every single time as fast as I can. It's a very uncomfortable place to be yeah. for me anyway. Right. Um, always trying to move faster. And I realized that, for example, I got so good at building structure. Um, so very balanced in that sense. But always, ref- not well, always uncomfortable with going to that place of specialization, right. like the S pyramid, right? I got good at structural stabilization, but when it came to specialization, move faster, I got uncomfortable mentally, and I stopped going there. Even yeah. when I was doing strongman and stuff like that, I wasn't the fastest. I did balance, but <clears throat> I got very good at building the structure, but not going toward being fast. And I see with fighters, I see a lot of them being good at being fast, but they have no structure because right. they don't want to work on it. Yeah. And it's, I think this is where most people fail is that is the whole pyramid. I made the mistake too. Like I got good at the base, but then I forget that you also have to, go, to go up. up. <laughs> right? I, because either one or the other will not be comfortable. But right. guess what? You have to that's do both. Life, yeah, for sure. And so that's what I, so uh, just to go back to the strong fit multiverse, I've been, Really happy with the results I've been, uh, we've been seeing lately with our coaches course and one-on-one mentoring. This has opened my eyes on online education as like, so you, on how to make progress. So on the right. coaches course, we give them like, you know, a lot of stuff to study, but then they come with good questions. We give them homework. They have a week to work on it and then questions and then a week. And then that seems to be making progress. Right. Like I thought we, when we started, I thought we would show up to a seminar Put the thing on the blackboard and done. Yeah, <laughs> right. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah. You know I mean, and then the shit will be solved and they'll go, huh, right. work on it and everything is gone. And that absolutely not, not is not really. the way yeah. this is going. That was, um, I did an assessment once and I came back and I told you, I was like, oh yeah, I fixed the shoulder. It was super right. easy. She yeah. just has to do this. She's like, so you didn't fix the shoulder. She has to do all of this in order for her to fix her shoulder. I was like, well, shit. Well, yeah. I was like, I know how she can fix her shoulder, but if she doesn't do any of this shit, it's not, <laughs> not going to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but that's the thing too, is it's the same on the assessment. You're like, I, 
told you what to do. You understand? We don't. Right. And that's what I thought in, in the part of me thought, okay, my job this is done. Is, and no, your job just not. started. Yeah. Right. And so, but so the Mighty Networks, we are, uh, the, the group we're creating, which is really the idea is to create our own place. Our own place, yeah. Where we can't be shut down, we can't be shadow banned, we can't be, you know what I mean? Like, this yeah. is really what we're doing. But there, I feel we can have both sides where we can explain the why and then take care of the how as we go, using right. the what. But over, you know, in, in a consistent fashion, For with sure. consistency, week after week after week, and that's the only way that this seems to work. Yeah. But so that means putting people in that uncomfortable place continuously. Right. Like I die every yeah. session with Paul. Every session. Right. Because <laughs> every time he's like, good, faster, better. <laughs> like he's like, he's not, you know, there's no satisfaction. Do you have a punishment if he does, if he like start to not go fast or game it? No, well, no, no. He's, you know, he's like, no, he just, faster. He just doesn't count the rep. Yeah, he just go, yeah, keep yeah, going. Faster. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. If I game it, he'll be like, all right. I know in his mind, he's like five more. Like I know that. And he's like, no, he wants me to go uh, all out. Even when I'm tired, he'll be slower and it won't be as hard. But right. it's as fast as I can manage. Okay. So him, he wants speed continuously. Right. As hard speed, no, harder, no, faster. It's and like, and he waits until I die. I'm like, good, five more. Because stay relaxed, keeps, it's working. I make progress every week. But the, it's, it's uncomfortable, like every single session. There right. is no, I, I never go like, yeah, <laughs> no. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't yeah. happen that way. But, but that's life, isn't it? <laughs> is it? But the fact is I make progress every week. Every time, so yeah. at the end, so do I get nervous five minutes before the kickboxing session? Every time. Every yeah. time I wish he's going to cancel. He canceled <laughs> once and I was like, oh. I'm sorry, don't cancel. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I would say yes. And but, after I was like, oh, I didn't right. have my session. Well, it was and like then, when you were going to go skydiving and you finally got, right. and you got there and it's like, you're overweight by two pounds. You can't jump. You're like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, oh no, come on. It took me three months to get ready for this. Um, That's a somatic error right yeah, there, isn't oh, it? <laughs> it fucks with your head so much. He's like, I was excited too. And I was like, I'll never do it now. Yeah. I'm fucked. Um, <laughs> and so with Paul, is that is every time, of course, I'm nervous. It gives me anxiety on the way back because I, I know I'm going to die. And I get here during the session. I'm like, I'm going to die. And after the session, I'm so happy. Right. And I realize I am making progress. I am kicking better. And I see the videos Alex is making. I'm like, fuck, it's working. Right. But is it uncomfortable? Inco Every single time. Is it mentally uncomfortable? Every single time. Right. Uh, uh, we were talking about this, like that going faster like this, I'm getting better. So now I'm not kicking with my legs. I'm, you know, turning my hips and everything. But my heart rate shoots, shoots. up every single time. Now, today was ridiculous. The weirdest part was my heart rate was up, but my wind was fine. Right. I could inhale through the nose and do whatever I wanted. I could do pure inhale breathing. My heart rate would not Slow Calm down. down. Would not slow down. I never hear my heart rate. It was just in my ears the entire time. Right. Non-stop. I could not bring it down. Were you doing kicks? Yeah. Did it have to do with the right foot? Did you feel the right foot okay. like at the fracture points? Uh, not quite, but um, I'm starting to be able to plant on the right mm. foot now. Right. And so first 10 reps is okay. Right. And then, you know, like start, I plant yeah. and it's like, Almost, right. you know, like, uh, and then I get to 12 and he starts to get tired and he, and he moves a bit. Yeah. And that instability like that. It's like, oh. Because that's how I felt with my hand. Uh, oh. Like, that was when, when we were first starting that whole uh, impact freaks. thing. And then, boom. Yeah. And yeah. the heart rate went up and I, it, I could, <gasps> like, it was a bit of, but yep. then I could breathe and it was just the heart rate said but elevated it, for it like half a day. Not come down. Yeah. yeah. So my last 30 minutes of the session, my heart rate would not just, come down. In between each set, I would go on my knees keep my chest up and breathe and try right. to bring it down. But I'm like, my win is fine. I yeah. just cannot get my heart rate down. And it right. went up almost right away. So I can engage my, my low abs, so as transverse, everything. everything. Like I can kick to my hips. Now I'm like there, I'm like, Pow! and then, but also by the way, there's that mental of like, don't kick. It's Pow! you're right, there already. Time, yeah. right? So now I can, mentally it's still very uncomfortable, but I get it. But suddenly I'm starting to open with uh, my hips and you know, because he makes me do like 10, 20, 30 kicks. Right. And the first 10, I can plant. And it's, I'm still, when I go on the left, it's, it's not as coordinated as I as would like. Right. But I start to do it. But then this gets tired. And he, sometimes he moves a bit differently or it's not right. very stable. And yeah, my heart rate shoots up. I think it's the bomb. Huh. Like he's straight yeah. into the brakes. 
Right. And my entire body goes like, yeah, goes, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> so I remember like way back when we talked about the, the types of anxieties. Yeah. Right? There was one that was, was uh, and we had that, we had some of our mentors, I talked about that, when the heart rate goes too high, yeah. they start to get panic attacks. I realized when I was doing it, looking at it, that me, it's that specific type of anxiety that is loss of cognition. Right. When the heart rate goes up, I don't like that. I yeah. feel like I'm not, I can't concentrate anymore. I can't focus. That's what freaks me out. Hmm. So I think the food brings the heart rate up and I lose and what I value the most, which, which means my focus. Yeah, my control, control mentally, my, my ultra focus, whenever I have to, I can just, right. you know, sharpen. Yeah. I lose that and that's when I freak out. That's and great. So, so I could not bring my heart rate down. So for you and in, in your mindset as to a plan moving forward, we talk about, you know, the exposure therapy of continuously doing yeah. it and getting better over and over in time. Are there other concepts that you're trying to get into. Right. To so I remember on the um, on that study on anxiety, they were saying, for example, interval training worked better yeah. for those people. Exposure therapy, heart rate goes high. So it fits very well when I was doing all my workouts that I put on the Julian's Corner on the workout of the day, which everything I do, I have to go on the airline yeah. and go full blast 15 seconds. So my heart rate shoots up. Then I get to lift. Okay. But I'm not allowed to lift unless my, sh my heart, heart rate, rate is, is super up and I can't elevated. breathe to force me to lift while chilling the fuck down. Just right. no, control it, come back, come back, come back as an exposure therapy. Yeah. And that has worked, obviously, I was doing for kickboxing, but what surprised me the most is outside. Like work has been kind of crazy for the last three weeks because yeah. we had all the switch to, uh, you know, away the from Kajabi to our Marty Networks, which yeah. is stressing the back end to no degree. Uh, plus when I was transitioning everything, plus coaches course and my one-on-one -on -one mentorings and everything, so all that work. I handled the stress extremely well. Right. Like, you know, sleeping at night, not, like I handled it better than I, than I thought I was capable of. Right. Actually. So the, the goal is to bring state versus action, yeah. obviously, uh, but basically the interval training allows you to basically go to the world that doesn't owe you shit. And then right. you, still, you still need to go act afterwards, right? right. So the point is that, right. is when I go lift after my heart rate is up and then so I can control my heart, I'm like, all right, this was hard, I'm there. But, we can... but in order to lift, I'm gonna have to control my breathing because then the heart rate wants to jump up. Right. And the panic attack wants to set in. And he's taking that and go, no, I don't. Right. Not quitting on it. Yeah. And that's the part. And so today it was very good with Paul because he was making me do stuff and I, and I did. And every time he kept me going, I kept my technique down and I kept moving. But every time he was down, was, I was dying. Yeah. Like my heart rate <laughs> would shoot up another 10, you know what I mean? And then I'd yeah. be like, I'm dying. But then he would give me a minute. I'm like, again. And he was like, again, and again, and again. And mentally, you know, the stuff was building up, building up, roaming, but yeah. I never quit. And so I'll know today I'll be in a really good mood. Right. I was dying. You see, I, I, incomfortable physically and especially mentally. Right. Mentally, I did not like it, but that's what I found in the last four weeks is whole steady. Right. With the exposure therapy, is that. It's so, hold well, the, uh, steady. Right. Hold steady. The ability to go into that physical fight right. and still be able to push through allows a mental fight to decrease, right? Afterwards. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so yeah. It, it's, it's that exposure therapy, which I think is, is huge because if we, you know, take it to once you go do work on the computer and you have to go right. have the calls and stay focused, like these calls are sometimes taxing because it's They're a lot draining. of energy. Yep. Um, and so do you notice heart rate a lot more steady and mental focus a lot better within the, the calls? Like for me, my biggest thing, sorry, wife calling. Mm -hmm. um, the, for me, the biggest thing is always staying focused during the calls. Cause like now, I mean, we're doing, I'm doing three, sometimes four hours back mm -hmm. to back to yeah, back. I've done that. Um, Fuck, is it draining? By it's the way. extremely draining because yeah. you have to, you're going with one person that's having to have these conversations. That's what kills you. It's the difference. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, that's like coaches week, right? Because yeah. you have three, you have a physiotherapist, a guy that's just starting to learn how to move, a CrossFit coach is trying to manage a whole class and just cares yeah. about, and you're trying to have all these 30 different conversations and make sure that it's applicable to everybody. Uh, at least one-on-ones, it's yeah. a little bit easier. But so do you notice a change in the focus if you do this type yeah. of training and go work versus not doing this type of training and going yeah. to work. Yeah, the biggest difference is that, is that holding steady. What I've discovered by doing all this is now I can hold stress, you know, I can do what I want and hold. Right. Whereas before it's like, do what I want, it's either going my way so I punch through right. or I quit. Yeah. 
So it's either no, it's that way, and there's no conversation, right? Or fuck it, and then it's yeah. the other way, and then I quit, and fuck it, then I don't want any of it or whatever. Whereas now it's no, no, no. This is what I want, and I just hold. Right. And so during the calls, um, as Richard said, the most draining part is you have. Uh, we have sometimes we have business call, and then there's a guy who's depressed. And then yeah. you have the dude who wants a better snatch. Right. And then you're back to business. And then you got the nutrition like, call oh, on shit. Friday. Yeah. And you're like, then there's 25 people. And yeah. you go like, whoa. And, and then, then they all have a different a question. Thing. Yeah. Or they all have a different question. Yeah. And now it's 7.30. <laughs> you go like, I'm in the twilight zone right now. Like, you're so gone. It's, it's a weird feeling. Yeah. But what I can do now is hold. Mm -hmm. So, no, it's not punch through. It's not. So, if the guy doesn't answer, I just hold the energy steady. And I'm like, come on, dude, let's start. I can use words. Right. Instead of. You know, like the swings, I just hold steady. The whole time, yeah. And that's that's almost like, I guess, an endurance mindset. So some pe people right. that are more endurance-based will understand, like, yeah, yeah, just hold steady. As not harm not, yeah. Yeah. at all. Just go. Yeah, punch through just, the wall, damn it. <laughs> punch right through. And so that capacity to hold steady. But so, and again, it's interesting because I can't find that through steady cardio. Right. At all. I found that through this. Through, through that exposure therapy yeah. of pushing... And then you're going to die, don't die. Right. You know that, quit plus one. Right. Right. So you're there, do the curls. No, 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 no. Breathe through it. Like, you're going to do going your through. reps. Yeah. I don't care how you feel at six. Right. Breathe. Yeah. I but do four more. I always tell people, find pleasure in your pain. Like, you should right. find, like, if. Exactly. Don't just try to displace. Like, you should be right. trying to go into it as Hold much as possible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hold steady. That's what I found within myself in the last four weeks. Right. Now, what I find trippy is you saying that you can maintain calm breathing and this now this is, could be ignorance on my part but would it be then considered a somatic error of some sort if your heart rate is elevated to 190 beats mm -hmm. per minute and you're able to yes yeah i still no i still think then my a, heart rate goes up i think it's a panic attack right so I then there's a that. there's a change uh, and, and which i think is super important when you talk about the symptoms and functions of anxiety right because just because you're able to nasal breathe the Just heart is still freaking the fuck out. Exactly. No, no. I'm still freaking out. Yeah. There's no question there. So right. there is a somatic error. So now we can ask, we can talk about, is it the foot? Right. Is it the impact the on impact. the bone? Like, again, like going back to osteocalcin, it removes the brakes right. on the system. The brake is a parasympathetic, the vagus nerve is control of the heart rate. Yeah. Is that what's happening? Or, and I think that's what this is, it's a mix of the foot, the heart rate goes up. Right. Okay. But then when the heart rate goes up, normally this is where I should apply the brakes even when the foot is tough. Yes. And I think that's why I cannot do. Where I get to that moment where the heart rate is up, cognition gets challenged. Yeah. And then I freak the fuck out. Right. So then to bring yourself back to center, would it be better to try and breathe to match the heart rate? Because it would technically start to match the state a little yeah, bit more? That's a, that, you know what? I and can try that during training. Down? The problem is if I do that in kickboxing, uh, I'm going to get out of breath to the next set. Well, because okay, so, so is that, yeah, but I might be mistaken in my approach. You, you might because, be right. So yeah. remember when we were talking about the phylogenetic hierarchy and I was like, I don't feel point. like being fucking calm. Yes, so I'm going to exactly. go do power yeah. cleans. So like, that's what I had. I've had the fighters do is, I, and sometimes they listen. Sometimes they just choose not to. I'm like, you can but freak out. You general. freak out. You yeah. do your you thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but so like, that's something that I've started to do. And I stole it from you, by the way, because that's when we were first playing with the breathing yeah. uh, is going into that action, that yeah. <gasps> breathing. Yeah. And so basically... Yeah, as they the do the recovery, point. is if you're freaking out, quit trying to pretend and namaste the bear. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, fucking accept it. And I don't need a dramatic fucking, ah, and yeah. you know, but I want just a. But mm. you see, the biggest difference is when I started kickboxing, I was breathing hard. Right. Because I was out of shape and I couldn't do and, it. Right. But now I'm in, because it's five months later and all the well, work. Well, you're doing all sprinting. the track work and everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's finally paying off, right? So now my breathing is calm. But I think mentally I'm probably thinking, but if I do that, I'm going to breathe hard. But you're not breathing hard. Right. That's not the problem. You're freaking out. Now. Yeah. So you, you're probably right on this. I'm going to try that during training. Before I do yeah. boxing. <laughs> but I'm going to try that. Like, instead of trying to calm, on the contrary, go more into it. Right. Go match the heart rate. Yeah. Yeah, because for me, that, that that's always been, I like to game the system. Not game the system. I like no, to understand, understand my understand body understand better, system, right? Exactly. And understand what I'm trying to accomplish. Yeah, and you might, yeah, sorry, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it was always match the state that you're fucking in and understand that sometimes you're not supposed to be calm. And so, yeah. like, when you started to bring it's in the osteocalcin point. and like bringing it, yeah. that, 
you know, that, that ability, you know, especially when we were talking for me was like the punching and like, I could just feel like the fracture points and everything. It was such a freak out point where I was like, Ooh, like yeah, I remember when yeah. we were doing during the summer, we we're doing the farmer scary. Yeah, that one. And yeah. oh man, like it was just there was that one point where my heart rate was through the roof, and I was just I, yeah. I wasn't uh, out of breath. Yep. Yeah, and so and remember I picked it up and yep. I failed, and I was like, holy shit! And heart rate spiked, and I was like, no, I'm gonna fucking do this. Yeah. And it was it wasn't like but not a, by coming down. Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't like a. I'm going to do this. It was a, I'm going to fucking do this shit. And I grabbed it. And that's when the heart rate totally calmed down and breath came down. And I yeah. felt like that was the point where I was at, you know, at the same state with the action. Well, yeah, because that, that reminded me of something. I do this for 30 seconds and I go do the rope pull, which is, by, for whatever reason, one of the <laughs> hardest ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this is the one where I'm trying to calm down and pulling and it's not working. Not working, yeah. On the first one, maybe the second one. Game I just completely crash. I just can't pull anymore. Right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try, I'm going to try that. I'll do this even for 15 seconds really hard, but then go ah, yeah. like action breathing. Yeah and, yeah. and what I've been doing now is when I have like that longer IT yeah. endurance yeah. stuff, like the rope pulls is rather than just a ah, like going hard on a, uh, on a breath. I feel like that still kind of spikes me up a bit. So I'll start to, and I'll just do as long as I can on that, like that growl behind the throat. Yeah. And it it, it 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 could just be me, but you guys can go try it out too. It seems to bring my, like my breath and my heart at that same kind of right, sympathetic so matching, fight state. Matching, yeah, and everything um, matches. State and action. It's a very interesting point. Um, I'm definitely not doing that during kickboxing, but I think it's because I fear the being out of breath because I right. was for five months straight. Yeah. But that's not where I'm at anymore, so it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, it's a very interesting point. So be, I'm gonna try that. It'd be a fun one to play with. Right. Plus, calming yourself down is probably getting away from the fight anyway. Right. Which and is what everybody out there seems to be wanting to teach. Exactly. <laughs> Just relax. Now, <laughs> the bell. Right. Exactly. Relax. But during kickboxing, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. But that's that'd be exactly that. Especially during kickboxing, jujitsu is no, 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 no. You are in a fight. Don't pretend you're yeah. not. Right, so I might have I might have fell into that because otherwise trap. then it, yeah. it doesn't allow you to change how you feel about the yeah. the emotion, right? So that emotion won't change towards that that challenge. Yeah, because so it still keeps this morning you back was on that this morning game. was very obvious. Right. I was not out of breath. It wasn't that. It was just the heart rate. Oh, the heart rate just would not come down. Which is what you see with the fucking fighters. Like I see it in their face because you just see their face. Like they just they're in panic, but they don't want to show panic yeah. because then it shows weakness. And so then that, for me, like, that's one of the biggest things when I see the fighters coming through is I can see that you're in pain and it's okay to be in pain here. Not yeah. when you're in the yeah. ring, yes. but, but here, yeah, exactly. like, that's the point is we we're trying, like, I'm training you for the fight. But right? you're not and fighting so, yet. Yeah. yeah exactly. And so this yeah. is where you, where you get to challenge these, these parameters or these limits for yourself to learn to come back. And so as soon as they start to zone out, I can see it, like I see it with with uh, with Levy all the time. Is I can see his heart rate is elevated. He's trying, he's trying to like remain yeah. calm, and I was like, "Don't remain calm. Like you're not yeah. calm. So quit trying to pretend that you're calm." Yeah. And so it's how do we start to match it, right? Yeah. And again, most of the times he listens. Sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> well, in the middle of the thing, it's yeah. a bit hard. Like it's a right, lot easier, on, yeah, outside of it than right. inside. But no, but so I, I, I like that point a lot. I'm gonna try that because it's true that I'm trying to calm myself down. But like this morning, it wasn't working. It doesn't work. Between each set, I had to go on my knees right. and just calm myself down. Yeah. Well, and if, as we start to talk about, you know, the osteocalcin, the proprio grip. Uh, doing these things, you start to see the breath is really just one fragment yeah. of con containing the entire system of right. the body as a calm or a fight. State. And I think that's where uh, we're going to do the, the next podcast would be on the breath because we want to have a, yeah. a module on this because uh, they're using it as a fix. Like it's not that simple. Yes, yogis can control their heart rate. Right. Using through it their as a breathing. System. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yogis can use it to control their heart rate, which is amazing, but in a calm situation, they're not going to control their heart rate doing kickboxing. It doesn't work then. that way. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, it's so... Well, even for endurance athletes, like I was talking to Dan, uh, who did our coaches course and, and everything, and he does uh, Ironmans. And he said, I've swim two hours, I can I can do everything. But he went to go to an Ironman where the, the lake was black. So it was in Big Bear. And so you can't see in front of your face when you're swimming. And he's like, within five minutes, heart rate was breast, elevated yeah. and freaked out. Fucked Again, yeah. energy systems out the window right there. Right. Because the stress 
comes through, right. and the body. And we're works. not saying the energy systems don't exist. We're saying it doesn't work it, like that. But it doesn't work that. It way. doesn't work that way <laughs> most yeah. of the time. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So that's yeah for the kickboxing, for example, like before I had to um, breathe a lot because I was I was out of breath because I was holding my breath or doing it incorrectly. Again, it wasn't that this morning. Right. It was a very interesting thing because like for the second half of the workout, my heart rate just would not calm down. But he started me with a lot of stuff on the foot. So I had to plant my right foot. Right. And now that I'm starting to feel, um, I'm start starting to feel this. Right. Like, and then there's even like, a, you know, like some skin starting to grow Throwing there and everything. and everything. I was like, oh, I can use it more. Right. Yeah. Famous last words. <laughs> right. And so I'm starting to plan going like, oh yeah, I can see. And I think from there, it just went, it yeah. went, no. Okay. Seriously, they'll bleep that part out. Yeah. No, yeah. if you, it was very interesting. So he was making me kick and I could tell. So I was planting my foot and kicking, planting and kicking. And I'm still uncoordinated when I have to do, but I was finding it. And I was right. like, oh, okay. So I'm learning. I accept the fact that I'm uncoordinated when I do it correctly, but it's the right technique. Whatever. But then I think that's when things thing started to go sour. Right. Not sour, but, but in that direction. Because after that, the kicks, I opened my hip more. And then, you know, like the low abs come in at the psoas. And, and when this, back, when yeah. the psoas got in, <laughs> <laughs> that's when suddenly I'm like, why is my heart? And and then, but that's the moment where I could stay there. Right now, right. that's when I freak out. Yeah, I'm not capable of of staying of staying there, staying steady there. Right, I just go. Hmm. See, that's that. So it's that building the steady there, but not steady comfortable. Right, steady uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yeah, it's the same thing during the calls. Is is it super taxing to talk to certain things? Yeah, but can you remain steady and focused? in a place that is not comfortable, when you're tired, when the conversation is hard or stuff like right. that. That's where I see the, the thing to be. Yeah. Huh. It's the same I mean, idea. Yeah, that's a, it's an interesting concept to, I mean, I think it puts every, all the concepts that you've talked about yeah. with the neuroscience and, and the, the hierarchy of the nervous system, like it's yeah. the lactate, like it, it starts to put everything together in, in a really cool way as far as approaching you're training for exposure therapy, but right. more so in the, you know, everything that we always talk about on an active way, right? Right, and I think if there's a difference really between what we do and what they do, if you look is that, is we're trying to integrate more thing into yeah. what we do instead of what they all seem to be, which is um, functional segregation, which is taking more little stuff or studies or whatever, and then specializing in them to then create a market share for to sell something. That's right. really what I see is them trying to take, how many do we see on Instagram that are becoming good at one thing? Yeah. Let's say breath or stuff like that. And then everything becomes about breath. Right. Right. That, that's kind of, a, it's a, like a self-fulfilling prophecy in a sense. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but it's all about breath. But eventually you're going to realize it's only one part of the system. You're still going to have to reconnect it to everything else. Like yeah. for example, everything about breath. No. Right. Um, but is it just, one part of it? Yes. Yeah. But looking it's at a the part. observation of right. of breath and the panic attacks. When I talk to most people, they still breathe normally. But you can't tell they're having a panic right. attack, but there's massive panic. And that's, you know, no, that now. Was, I think that was me today, honestly. Yeah. But that's the thing is I didn't feel especially panicky, but my heart rate fucking did. Yeah. It was kicks. Ooh, I'm going to have to, the Chinese line, that makes sense. Ooh. Okay, anyway. Uh, because, but yeah, that yeah will, like mentally, I was like, I'm fine. I can breathe yeah. fine. But I never feel my heart rate, which is, that's another rabbit hole. Thing, yeah. But it was in my ear Going the crazy. entire time. Huh. But I can't, I wasn't panicky mentally, nor was my breathing. Right. But my heart certainly, it certainly was. was. It was telling you where you were. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. So if I was listening to my heart, then I would be like, all right, well, I'm having a panic attack. Then. Right. But not feeling panicky or anything. It's not that simple. Yeah. It's not that simple. That, that's my problem when they go with the breath and everything is you think like you control your breath, you control the panic. Fuck no, it's no. not. It's not. Are you going to lessen some of the symptoms? Yes, but it. But to what it's extent, a Band-Aid right? then, yeah. then. Then it's not, a, it's one of the things that needs to be integrated, but by right. itself it's not enough. For sure. Yeah, well, and so we have a course that we're going right. to come out because we don't like how many anything else that we've seen out there. Um, and we're going to do it it's our way. Enough. Yeah. Yep. And so I've been working on the name and I think breath in movement or something along those lines, because it's not just about breathing, right. but it's about breathing while you're moving, while taking action. 
And, you know, something that I always say is like, I can't give you a fucking perfect template for your morning. Like I have a client right now, a one-on-one mentoring client. And it's, he's like, well, what do I do in the morning to prepare for my routine for the day? And I was like, well, it depends because each day is going to be different. Yep. Each night is different. If yep. you go to sleep and, you know, like I had a, and your baby starts crying at three in the morning and you only got two hours of sleep <laughs> yeah, well, and the, the wife is furious because she thinks that it's your fault that the baby is crying. And the, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's so many proponents. So really the goal is I want to give you 30 different types of morning routines so that you can apply it depending on what the day has for you or what you've gone yeah. through in the night. Right? right. But you know what they want is if the baby is crying and the wife is furious and everything, I can still have the same day. Same day, exactly. And no, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Controlling your breathing will not give you that day. day yeah. That day is gone. Yeah. That day is gone the second the baby cried, dude, and the second your wife got upset. Like, yeah. But I think that's, because that's what we see even for exercises or stuff like that, is people can be like, can I make up for it? No, you can't. Your right. day is different. Yeah. That's, that's it. So let's deal with that instead of, well, you know, it's a whole like body as a subject or body as an object. Is right. They want their life to be an object, an object, object instead of being part of it. Right. No, you don't get to be, my, you know, to decide what your day is in that sense. Is right. you, what is happening is part of the conversation. Absolutely. So in the next podcast, let's go into that breath module because we want to, yeah. because most of what we see on breath is parasympathetic and calming and things calming. down. Yeah. But that's only one aspect right. of the whole thing. Yeah. And so, because uh, that's a podcast in itself. So let's sure. let's do the next podcast on breath on and how far we see it, uh, how far you can take it, but also the limitations right. that we just started to talk about. That it is not, it's not the end all of be all. Like just controlling your breath will not control your life. Like it doesn't work. This it doesn't yeah. work that way. There needs to be action taken. Yeah, exactly. Outside it's the, at the, the end, path. it's still action based. Yeah. Anyway. We'll cover that in the next podcast. Beautiful. In the meantime, I dig it. Have a good one, guys. Bye, guys.